The French sociologist Emile Durkheim was known for his work on religion, and in his work he made a particularly provocative assertion. Durkheim believed that religion was actually the worship of society itself. But what does that mean? Does it mean that he thought people were actually worshipping the society directly and knowingly? No, that's not what Durkheim meant. But what he did mean is that they were worshipping something about the social experience. And to understand that, we have to look at something called the sacred and the profane. Now to start with, Durkheim believed there were three key elements to a religion. Beliefs, practices, and a community of people who held those beliefs and engaged in those practices. In his work, The Elementary Forms of Religious Life, Durkheim stated that a religion is a unified system of beliefs and practices relative to sacred things, that is to say, things set apart and forbidden. Beliefs and practices which unite into one single moral community called a church, all those who adhere to them. Now in this quote, you see a reference to beliefs, practices, and that single community. But you also see a reference to the sacred and the profane. But what does Erkheim mean when he says the sacred and profane? What is that all about? Well, the best way to understand this is to take a step back and look at the social experience. The thing that Durkheim was arguing that religion was actually the worship of. And what that is really all about is something called collective effervescence. Collective effervescence is that feeling that a person experiences when they are sort of in one accord with a group of people. When you're in a place with a group of people who share a similar value, enjoy a similar experience, or in some way feel connected. Now, right from the beginning, this sounds like a church experience for those who are believers. They gather in a place with other people who share the similar value, the adoration for their deity of choice, and they engage in practices to share those common beliefs. And while they are feeling this connection with their faith, they're also feeling a connection with one another. And Durkheim recognized that this was a good feeling, a sort of pro-social experience, that people liked being in a space with other people and feeling that connection. And that feeling, that energy that wells up in that space was called collective effervescence. But this feeling isn't experienced only in conventionally religious spaces. If you've ever been to a sporting event, or a concert where you were surrounded by fans of the team or the musician that you were there to see, you've experienced collective effervescence in that space. When your favorite receiver scores a game-winning touchdown and you're high-fiving people around you who you've never even met before, that exuberance that you feel welling up within, that's collective effervescence. So Durkheim recognized that this is something people enjoy. And he believed that one of the reasons we as human societies construct religion is to sort of manifest this experience, to create a space where people gather together, engage in rituals that bring about that feeling of collective effervescence. Now he saw other values to religion as well, that it sort of bonded society together, that it was an impetus for sort of social solidarity. But when he talks about religion as the worship of society itself, in many ways what he's really saying is that human societies developed religions as a space to sort of create this collective effervescence experience. And from that comes the idea of the sacred and the profane. Those symbols and rituals rituals and artifacts of these experiences are sacred. Those things that are connected to some experience that is greater than, transcendent, above and beyond the ordinary. These are the things that are identified as the sacred. Conversely, the profane refers to the ordinary, the mundane, the everyday. Profane in this sense does not necessarily mean offensive as in profanity. It simply means that which is not set apart as sacred. It is everything that is not sacred. So obviously a place like a church is considered sacred, but it's not just places that are sacred. It also includes objects, like items that are used in worship. But it can also include times, like days that are considered sacred in religious calendars. Moreover, context determines whether something is sacred or profane. For example, a simple wax candle sitting on a mantle to light a dark room would be considered profane. But that very same candle, if used in some sort of religious ceremony, would then be sacred. But to Durkheim, ultimately, the most important distinction in religion was not the distinction between good and evil, but rather the distinction between the sacred and the profane. If you found this video to be helpful, please do me a favor and click like and subscribe to the channel.
Thank you for watching.